Hey everybody, welcome to my first video of 2021. Uh, congratulations, we officially made it. 2020 is over, yes. And I hope we are all better people because of it. Uh, New Year is always my favorite time to take time to look back at the previous year and evaluate my goals and um, analyze if I were able to achieve them, to look at the positive lessons and the outcomes that I was able to learn from the previous year. And let me tell you, 2020 had a lot of lessons for me and for all of us. And I thought it would be great to share some of those, some of my top five favorite lessons and outcomes and improvements that I was able to take away from 2020 and share them with you guys. I'm put together this mini series of five different videos talking about some of my favorite learning moments, uh, improvements that I was able to make in my life. And um, I hope you'll find them valuable. And I would love to share those five top takeaways with you. Lessons that I learned, um, how I was able to improve my life during 2020, and other positive key lessons that will include some practical advice on productivity, uh, leveraging technology to help you optimize your day, some helpful books, and um, some pro tips on just being happy and more content person in general. So stick around and uh, hopefully you'll find this video is valuable. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and uh, let's go. All right, guys, in today's video, I'm super excited to talk about my favorite topic of all time is productivity. <laughs> this is something that I'm very passionate about. I've been, a, I feel like, <laughs> I've been a very productive since I was a child. Uh, I remember one of my early uh, school memories. I think I was in the first grade and I was reading one of our books, uh, class books that I was reading had this uh, chapter about schedules and just structuring your day. <laughs> and it resonated so much with me that I made this personal schedule for myself and I put it in my room on the wall that I was trying to... <laughs> to follow every day. So I put put the time when I wake up, the time when I have breakfast, the time I go to school, the time I do my homework, etc., etc. Uh, so that all you have to know about me and the relationship with always seeking for that perfect methodology, the perfect tool to optimize my day and optimize my productivity. So 2020 for me was a perfect year to just really double down on being productive and optimizing my time, especially since there was nothing else to do for the most part of the year. And uh, uh, when when we got into the quarantine, while some people might have been binging the, on Netflix or binging on those uh, potato chips, I just said, alrighty, now I can really spend uh, every awake hour um, of the day just by focusing on what I love is work and really optimizing my time. So the first change that I've made that helped me to really structure my day since I had to go from working in office to working from home is to create a very strict and very clear separation of my space at home. I designated only one area to work, which is my little office area and uh, where I keep my laptop, all my work supplies, et cetera, et cetera, all the devices and anything that comes to work related, I do it from that space. I don't work from my bedroom. I don't work from the dining table. I don't work from the kitchen. So that something was non-negotiable for me. So from that point, other spaces that I designated in my, uh, in my house, I designated the dining area space. I designated my obviously sleeping area. I designated my entertainment area, which is my living room. And um, recently I have also added a meditation area. I did have a, so I did have this spare bedroom sitting that was just cluttered with junk. And uh, I finally got to clean it up and turn it into the functional space where free of technology, where I can go and meditate and uh, get centered in the evening, especially after a long work day. And um, 
having that separation of space I found to be immensely helpful to keep that work and personal time separated as much as I can while working from home and being at home 24 seven. And it also helped me to create this mental separation between work, fun and life and just keep me a little bit more centered and less insane <laughs> during those first few months of the lockdown. My next productivity hack that actually I started doing way before 2020, but um, uh, in 2019, I did quit sugar. So what I mean by that, I quit any added sugar, including honey and any sweeteners besides fresh fruits or juices. And I found that they also made in a huge impact on my productivity and my energy levels, uh, ability to wake up early in the morning, uh, keeping the steady levels of energy throughout the day. So after quitting the sugar, I was able to eliminate that energy dip that usually happens around 12, 1, 2 p.m. during the day where you feel lethar lethargic and you either craving the coffee boost or the sugar bo boost to get you through the day. So that was not an easy switch. And it took me a few attempts uh, over little by little, uh, step by step to uh, quit sugar altogether. And uh, I definitely, definitely had some sugar cravings that I tried to overcome by eating fruits and dried fruits and try to resist eating any sugary products, which over time that craving has went away and uh, now I don't miss it. And I find that I, myself, I'm a happier and healthier person because of it. So the third productivity hack that I added to my routine, which also happened before 2029, and it's something that I was doing for a little bit, and then I ended up following full time. So uh, I'm talking about um, following the elimination diet called Whole30. Uh, some of you guys might heard about, about it, some might not, uh, but it's kind of similar to keto and paleo. In idea, so this is a 30-day uh, program, 30-day elimination diet, where you exclude uh, beans, any dairy products, any wheat products, um, sugar. Uh, you exclude anything that's processed, and you consume fresh roots and vegetables, meats, uh, fish, uh, and nuts. The whole idea of this 30-day elimination diet is to reevaluate your relationship with the food and help you to change your eating habits and make you more aware of how you eat and uh, build a better relationship with whole foods and fresh ingredients and show you that to eat healthy doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it's just salads all day. I've been doing this diet on and off for maybe a couple of years. I've done it like three, four times. And I noticed that every time I do it, I just get so much more energy. I feel less lethargic. That energy dip that I get in the middle of the day, that would go away. And last year I decided that I, I just love it so much and I enjoy feeling this way so much that I want to do it permanently. And uh, I've been doing it since May of 20. 19 and uh, it has really been an amazing experience i don't say that now i never gonna eat another piece of candy uh, i do sometimes have you know some cheat rules for myself for example if i'm traveling or if i would go out i would allow myself to eat whatever i want but if i'm at home and majority of the time of 2020 we've been at home so i cook and i eat very very clean and i follow whole 30 diet and that again helped me just to feel better about myself feel better about my health and i noticed that the positive impact of switching to eating whole foods and eating super clean really spilled into the other areas of my life. Besides just me getting more energy, I found that I sleep better. I found that it's easy for me to restore after the workouts and just found myself more full of life. So the number four productivity hack tip is switching your sleeping patterns to waking up super early. So for many years, I've been reading all these articles about CEOs waking up at these crazy hours, 5, 4 a.m., working out, doing their personal things, kind of like starting their day before the rest of the world wakes up. So that didn't resonate with me at all in my early 20s, but in the last couple of years, I've been reading more and more about waking up early, and I thought I'll give it a shot and see how it makes me feel. And 
I have to tell you, it was not easy to start waking up at 5 a.m. and just be like, woohoo, let's, <laughs> let's rock this day, let's take on the world. So usually I take this time um, just to really ease in into my day, have a cup of coffee, do some light reading, um, whether it's I'm catching up on some business reading, maybe I'm reading some spiritual books, uh, something on meditation, uh, philosophy and stuff like that. But just uh, I see this time in the morning as my personal time to do things that I enjoy before I have to get up and start getting ready to work. Uh, because if I wake up and I have to jump on the computer and start my work day, then for some reason I feel like I'm already behind on the day. I'm behind on my life and it gives me a huge anxiety. And uh, by waking up at 5 a.m., it just gives me this buffer of time where I actually have a few hours just to do whatever I want, enjoy my day, maybe do some light exercise, go for the early run, do yoga at home, and uh, really just start the day already prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally versus just like rushing into it like a chicken with a no head and then you know, taking that energy with me throughout the day. So having that early wake up time and going to bed early really, again, really improved how I felt and it really helped me to be more centered and balanced. And I really, really enjoy doing that. And um, especially it's beautiful in the summer when you get up super early, get to meet the sunrise, enjoy the cup of coffee outside. It's just the best feeling ever. I live for that feeling. And the key to stick into this routine of waking up early is that even on the weekends, you still need to wake up early. You need to maintain the same sleeping routine. Waking up at 5, going to bed at 9, 10. I feel like I'm sounding like a grandma when I say it, but I don't care. I enjoy it. it makes me happy. So <laughs> no judgments on here. I do like to go to bed early these days, and but I'd rather feel really good throughout the day than, you know, party all night and feel like crap the next morning. I do enjoy occasional party, but not as much as in my 20s. So it's all about balance, people, okay? All right, so the fifth one, the last but not the least, is finding or sticking to the consistent workout routine. And um, I know it's been said many times, but it took me a while. It took me some time consistently working out to notice the long-term positive impact working out had on my mental health. Uh, it just helped me to pr push through some, through some challenging times at work. There were some times that I wanted to just like give up on a certain task and quick, and then I would mentally travel back to the tough moment in my workout. And I would remind myself how I was able to push through that pain and push through and give my maximum effort and feel the, um, have that feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment at the end of the workout that definitely helped me to overcome those challenging moment, moments at work and in my life. And just to uh, really communicate that message to my body and to myself. And the lesson that I gained from it is that the pain is temporary. And uh, if we just push through, there will be an end of it and it will be all worth it at, at the end of the process will become stronger, better, and more resilient. So definitely finding that workout routine that works for you is extremely important, whether uh, yoga, running, weighting, uh, lifting weights. I personally found that CrossFit uh, worked wonders for me. And um, uh, But each of you might have your personal uh, favorite workout style, but I do recommend sticking to it and doing it on a consistent basis to start seeing those positive results. So. These are the top five productivity takeaways from 2020 for me. And this is how I was able to keep it together last year, stay productive, stay healthy, emotionally, physically, mentally. And uh, I hope you find these recommendations valuable. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps to boost my self-esteem, so you can do it below. And thank you again for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.